Ladies and gentlemen, Lake Oswego is in Oregon. Oregon is in the United States, and the United States is the most infected country in the world. Uh, this is Brazil Ronnie Bennett. Brazil seems to be about to catch up with us. <laughs> yes, this is Ronnie Bennett. Uh, who's ca catching up with us? Brazil is oh. like really just, they say they're two weeks away from their peak, and they're just, you know, and, and you've got a guy down there who says, oh, it's just no worse than the normal flu, you know. Oh, what does that sound like? <laughs> His best friend. Donald yeah. Trump. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, it, it, I, I think that I think we've seen what lack of leadership can do in something like this. You know, we didn't expect this. But lack of leadership has just really let this thing float. Well, I don't I, I may not have heard you right, but it sounded like you thought our president before the virus oh, no 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 was a I, I, i'm saying this is what lack of leadership gets you okay you know of course he hasn't been a leader at all but he hasn't been put in a position where he had to be tested like this and now everybody can see that he does nothing except his his hardcore people who are out there you know, with their guns and everything at state capitals saying, I demand the right to be free and be able to leave my house. Yeah, give somebody else the flu, you know. Um, I don't it, understand. It, it's, it's a crazy dystopian world we're living in right now, you know. Fancy word, okay. It, fancy word, but dystopian nonetheless. I mean, it's just... It's amazing. This is all the science fiction movies I ever saw about a, uh, you know, about a disease and, you know, wiping out the rest of the world and all that's left is this one guy played by Charlton Heston. You know, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. So yeah. it is. It's, yeah. yeah. Actually, it's not ridiculous. It's really awful. Just awful. Yeah. Well, um, that. Uh, you know, my neighbor did a wonderful thing for me. Um, she called me day before yesterday and said, how about if I cook and bring dinner to your house on Monday, on the holiday? And so we did that and sat across the table, long way from each other, mm -hmm. and had a terrific meal and talked about a lot of this stuff. And um, and it's pretty awful. It's just... I mean, the, the photographs from the weekend or the video of, you know, hundreds of people crammed together inside a small pool here and there, you know, what are they thinking? I, I mean, it leads you to want to say they deserve to die, and that's not a good thing to be saying. Well, um, you know, here's a thought I had is that the people who are protesting this, this the most are Trump supporters. They're, they're the ones out there with the Trump signs going, I want to be free and leave my house, but by the way, here's my Trump sign. And I'm thinking Trump should want them to stay indoors. There's an election coming up, and maybe they'll all be dead, and that's how we're going to win the election. You know, see, you apparently are under the impression that he actually thinks. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I don't think that he connects things in that way. Yeah, I but don't think his brain does that. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I, mean, I saw those things of the people in the pool, but I also saw beaches and bars and things like that where people were told, okay, go back to them, but be careful, social distance, and boom, they're just like you're going crazy. Oh, boy, you know. I wonder how much that has to do with you and me being old, that, you know, we, we're slower, we're older, we don't need to go out partying or to clubs and... Uh, or apparently the beach, and um, and and it, that's true when you're older. When you're younger, you're just oh so full of all this energy, and and it must the same time that they've been locked up, the same period of time that we have, must have been a lot like agony if you can't go out and go to your clubs or go to the places that you normally go to, and yeah. uh, and it must be much harder when you're younger. And I don't know a solution for that. I think I part of the hubris so that they're living in is the fact that they're younger and their chances of getting this are less or of, of, of being killed by it are much less than ours. At our age, uh, we're, we're in the risk group. You more than me, actually, you know. 
Um, but we're in the risk group. So they, they go, oh, well, we can go out and party. It doesn't matter. But if I get it, I'm probably not, I'm probably not going to live through it, you know? I mean, uh, so I stay indoors. I, the outdoors, to me, it's scary. I'm thinking about going for a walk today because I've been tired all the time and my, lightheaded and so on. <coughs> it's because I've been in so long, you know? And I'm thinking about going out today, and it scares me. What scares you? What scares me is not me. It's other people. I go out. I got the mask. I got the gloves, right? Uh, when I come back, uh, I, you know, wash my hands, wash the gloves, wash the mask. Um, many times if I've been out for an extended period of time, I take a shower, you know, in order to make sure I'm clean. But uh, other people aren't doing that. I go out on the street, and there are people out there without masks. And a good, a lot of them. Uh, I mean, more than I would like to see. The other day, I did go out, and I came back within 10 minutes because I felt I was being barraged by people who were trying to give me this thing. You know, the only tool we have against this virus is distancing and masks. That's mm -hmm. all we've got. Yeah. That there is no other thing you can do to protect yourself or protect other people. And, yeah, I think today we're going to hit that big magic number, you know, the 100,000 deaths. Yeah. yeah. Um, We're number one. We're number one. Um, and uh, and it's going to, and it just goes so fast. I heard, I remember like Thursday or Friday last week hearing one of the MSNBC or CNN mm -hmm. people, you know, hosts saying, well, within a, by the end of next week, we'll hit 100,000. I remember thinking, no, by Monday or Tuesday, uh, if you're following the numbers. Yeah. And here it is. And I, it, 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 there was the incredible New York Times front page, right. you know, right. about it. And it, it was stunning. I mean, not not the, I paid close attention to it. Some part of, partly because. Hey, I'm retired. I have time, you know, and unlike other people with kids and all of that. But how can you, how can you not have been stunned by that? And it's not like if you live in Omaha, you didn't know about it. It was all over the web. So if you know, if you're online, you would have seen that, the front cover of that newspaper. Um, and then they went out to what is that? I never heard of it before, but it sure got a lot of of play this weekend is it called lake of the ozarks or lake something? of the ozarks yeah yeah we're crammed together um and 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 i i somebody was quoted somewhere online that was in one of those large groups um asked about why she wasn't wearing a mask or keeping a distance and she said something to the effect of well i leave it up to god it, it, a mask well, did you hear? Yeah. Did you hear this about side. that 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 preacher who refused to close down his church because he had to preach to God because those, God yeah. was going to save us from this thing, and then he caught it and died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Terrible. yeah, because he let all all these people in and, and they infected him and in in, res, in respect to that he dies. Okay, and they're all going well. He's with God now. Awful. You know. I. You know, with so many people dying in such a short period of time, it seems that we're not... We're, when do we mourn these people? I, I feel like we're, they're just, you know, they die and they they're go in, somewhere they're, they're, and, yeah. and nobody pays any attention. Many times they can't be given the kind of burial they would have normally had because they can't have a, a bunch of people there when they're getting buried. No, that's true. Um, and and I don't mean them individually, but I mean the country as a whole. Did you watch last weekend mm -hmm. on a Saturday the speech that former President Obama gave for graduates of the country? Yeah, yeah. I mean, compare that to what our current president is doing, which is mostly just tweeting nasty things about people he doesn't like. Um and it doesn't, when, when I was watching him on that graduation speech, it was only five or six minutes long, mm -hmm. and it was so impressive, it wouldn't take much to do the same kind of speech 
about what we're all living through right now, this terrible thing for a president to do that. Yeah, yeah. And he never goes anywhere near it. Because he's incapable like of it. Exist, Ronnie, he is totally incapable of it. The man was born with an empathetic bypass. He has no empathy for anyone. He, he's incapable of giving that kind of speech. Um, you know, and, and he doesn't know how, he just doesn't know how to do it. You know, there's an old saying that I used to hear was, if you can't be sincere, at least fake it. He can't even fake it. He has the inability to fake sincerity. I had a long conversation with a friend over the weekend, a New York friend, um, who sees him as evil. And I've never put a lot of thought to the word evil. I mean, mostly if you talk about people, that there are people who are evil, yeah. mostly what comes to mind for our generation is Hitler, yeah. Mussolini, pe right. Paul Pot, people like that. Right. Um, but he was insistent, and he had on the tip of his tongue the whole litany of the really awful things, not that he's said, but that he's done or made to happen. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking about that ever since, mm -hmm. about labeling someone as evil. That person is evil. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a huge reluctance to do that, even someone I dislike as much as the president. But, you know, the more I think about it, the more I'm becoming convinced. <laughs> ah, boy. You know, I mean, I think, uh, I, I think the guy lacks empathy. He lacks leadership. He really doesn't know how to lead. You know, he doesn't... Know. It's bigger than those little attributes. It's a much bigger problem than that from him. But if we at least got that out of him, we would be in slightly better shape than we are right now. I mean, uh, I was never a big fan of Mario of Andrew Cuomo, but he I've I've gotten to like him because of the leadership he took in this state, in which he every day went on the air and gave a pep talk about why you wear masks and we got to do this. He and if we're, when, it's not past tense, he well, still does it. Well, well, he still does it. I'm saying, but he goes he, he's gone on the air all this time. And I think by his force of, of, of speaking and by encouraging, uh, he's managed to bring this number down. I mean, mm -hmm. it, he's done it himself. Mm -hmm. And that's something, well, the pre any, if, if he were president, he would have done that. New Yorkers for going along with it. What? You have to give credit oh, well, to he, New Yorkers. Oh, well, he gives credit to New Yorkers. He, he gives a pep talk about New Yorkers, and that's why we're doing this. And look what we've done. Look at how high it was. Look how low it's now getting. Let's keep it there. Let's not take our foot off the pedal, you know. But he gives this speech every day, and most New Yorkers are watching it because it's a great pep talk. And It's, it's really interesting to not be a New Yorker anymore and listen to New Yorkers talk about their place and their governor and their situation as though the rest of the country doesn't know about it. It's very funny to listen to. Well, them. I mean, uh, you remember that great New Yorker cover? Uh, I think you had that, that uh, poster on your wall, and I certainly had it on mine, where you've got uh, the, the Hudson River, or rather you've got the St. Was the Hudson no, River? No, it just shows New York is huge yeah. and the rest of the country. Yeah, and then you got the Hudson River, and then California is like, it looks like it's almost a state over. I mean, that's the way New Yorkers perceive of the rest but of the see, world. But, but what I'm hearing from you is you've forgotten that. And so uh, we're all perfectly aware of what's going on in New York because you don't ever let us not be. And, and it's not like it's just you. I mean, the whole... Cuomo has become a hero to people all over the country. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Well, you know why? Because he is speaking in the voice they would like to hear from the president. Well, I mean, even if you don't have that particular thought, it's he's still useful and interesting. Yes. Yeah. But, um, but apparently to those people in the Ozarks, they haven't seen him. You know, they're out there just, oh, we're just going to have a lot of fun here. And yeah you know, your death rate is going to go up. I'm sorry, you know? It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. You know? And it's not going to be over soon. I think this this particular virus, I mean, we'll, we'll come up with a vaccine. 
That's for damn sure. But until we do that, this thing's going to be with us for quite a while. There was a terrific story in, and I'm not going to be able to tell you, but one of the big newspapers, Times, Post, Guardian, something like that a few yeah, days ago, yeah. that did the history of the polio virus. And I remember, and I'm sure you do very clearly, mm -hmm. when we all went, everybody in America went to your local school and got a sugar cube with the with the vaccine mm -hmm. mid in the late 50s we all did that it took more than 50 years to get a vaccine for polio yeah. more than 50 years and most vaccines take years and decades to come about and everybody thinks we're going to have one by fall well um we didn't have quite the science we have now and we also this is a this is an international quest. I think the the number one candidate so far for vaccines is out of Oxford in England. Uh, it it you know I think we are going to come up with one, but I don't think it's going to be tomorrow. I think that you're you're sounding like Trump. You know everything's well, going to be fine. All I said is that once we get a vaccine, maybe this thing. The, the, our lives can get back a little bit to normal, but until then, no. But it can't. Even if it were possible to get a vaccine that you could trust and was mm -hmm. useful, it worked that quickly, oh, where are you going to get all those doses for the whole world? Well, supposedly, supposedly, I can't remember who's doing it right now, but the Oxford vaccine, they're making a bet that it's going to be the vaccine. And so... They're already making s several million doses. Do you know how many people? Oh, are in I the know world? how many people are in the world. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> and who gets it first? Yeah, but here, you know, the interesting thing about polio was that there's a great documentary that I kept and I watched it again the other day uh, that was done on American Experience about the whole polio ep epidemic and what caused it. What they finally figured out caused it was our cleanliness that we had cleaned up so much of the society. We cleaned up, you know, health, get people to wash their hands, do all that. So much so that this disease, which was once an immunity you built up from childhood because of all the filth around you, no longer did that, and the disease was opportunistic. And that's what caused it. What caused it was cleanliness. I don't understand. It Because... It, when, you're, when you don't have a clean society, people build up from childhood certain immunities to things, stronger immunities to certain bugs and strains like that. And this bug could never grab hold because uh, some of the childhood diseases the kids would get and coughs and whatever gave an immunity to polio. But once we cleaned up the society, we took the horse shit out of the streets and we, you know, we did a lot of cleaning up, it is... That they say that's what caused it, and I've read this on several occasions that it was our cleaning up that actually caused it. Uh, but you know, and you know, when you talk about the vaccine, how 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 long it took to develop that? Do you know how, how undifficult it was? That's I don't know if that's a word, but how non-difficult it was to get tests on that, because in those days they didn't have to go through. Somebody saying, okay, you can go test it on people. They just went and tested it on people. They got a bunch of kids and tested on them. In fact, some kids died when they tested it on them uh, because it turned out there was a lab in Berkeley, California that was making a bad batch. Uh, but anyway, once that was solved, we had a vaccine. And I love I love. And you make it sound simple. It was more than 50 years well, more than 50 years of working on it. Yeah. So I don't, you know, and, and most vaccines take decades. We still don't have a vaccine for SARS and right. some of the others. Right. Um, and it's not for lack of trying. Yeah. God knows. But anyway, I do. Well, all I'm saying is if we either come up with a, a, uh, a vaccine or we come up with some cures that work and prevent the deaths from happening and people having to be intubated and so on, then we can kind of get on with our lives. Uh, but until then, 
oh, this is going to be with us. It's going to be with us big time. And I think that right now we haven't seen the beginning of the plague in America because of all these people jumping into the same pool in the Ozarks, you know, and people like that. You watch. There's going to be a spike in about two weeks because that's how long it takes that is going to be incredible everywhere except New York and maybe California because in Cal and and I think you're in, you guys have been pretty good about it too, right? Well, there aren't so many people here too. Yeah. I mean, it's a big like if you look at Maine, yeah. you know, there's hardly any hardly any patients mm -hmm. that you know. And, and ours is staying pretty low. It's been ticking up for a week, but very slow and very few. But there are a lot fewer people here. Mm -hmm. And, um, and well, it's a long political explanation, but not time for that right now. Yeah. Um, but it's doing, a lot of it is there's just, you know, in the whole state of Oregon doesn't begin to even have the same number of people as New York City. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, right. <laughs> you know, um, uh, but I mean, we, we've been impacted here very badly because we were the, as, as Cuomo has brought up so many times, we were looking towards China as where it was coming from, when really where it was going to come from was Europe. And in the three months that we did nothing, or the two, month and a half we did nothing about it, and the president didn't close down the European uh, travel, uh, there were approximately 3 million Europeans that came through New York City, many of them carrying the virus with them. And that's why we were so heavily impacted. Um, and uh, it w it's been scary. I mean, we've lived with a kind of fear I don't think the rest of the country has exactly appreciated. And it shows they didn't appreciate it because they're jumping into pools in the Ozarks. You know, we see a site like that, and we just, it's like a horror movie to us here in New York. So, yeah. Yes, well. well you know, it, 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 we, we live in strange times, my dear. We live in strange times, you know. And uh, uh, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I, I, I certainly don't think I'm going to see the end of it in my lifetime. I think we're still going to see this thing with us and perhaps some others coming along. And I hope we handle the, rest, the ones coming along better than we handled this one. But, A lot of that depends on who gets elected in November. Yeah. So how you feeling? I'm okay. She's okay. Yeah. Sticking in there, huh? Yeah. Getting by. Getting by. Getting by. That was very nice for somebody to come and give you lunch. Um, yeah, Memorial it's um. Day. I've spent the last the holiday weekend mostly at home, except for that dinner with my neighbor. Um, quiet and at home mm -hmm. after. Um, I just need to to settle in, and try to find some acceptance of the latest information from my doctors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that takes quiet time and being alone and. You know, accepting it, and, and you don't do that just because you decide to. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? Exactly. Um, and maybe I'm coming along. It's going to take a bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've been a trooper so far, you know, and it can't. It hasn't. I'm sure it hasn't been easy for you. It well, you know, and now that with the pandemic, you know, it is. And unless I just don't wake up some morning, mm -hmm. I will, when it becomes too hard to live with these diseases, I will use Oregon's death with dignity law. Mm -hmm. And my friend who lives in New Jersey, who will take care of everything that has to be taken care of after I'm gone, mm -hmm. you know, we planned from my first diagnosis that she would be, she would come out here and be with me at the time that I do that. But no, she can't be getting on an airplane right. now. Right. Can't be done. Right. Um, so I and I wonder how many people I mean, you know, that's a pretty that's a, a pretty big deal thing to make that decision. Lots of people won't or can't. Yeah. And I wonder how many other situations people in the country or in various ones are in that the pandemic, besides being you know, a pain in the butt that you can't go anywhere and do anything or hug a friend, you know, and all of that, the awful right. things we're all going through. 
how many other situations like mine will be dramatically changed because of it? With that, uh, with that, we we've run out of time. Oh dear. Okay. Oh, oh dear. But we we will do another one in a couple of weeks, and you know. Let's hope the world is a better place to live in two weeks from now. Oh, do you really believe that? <laughs> Not in the least. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ronnie Bennett. You can find her at timegoesby.net. That's her blog. Read it. It's terrific. She's And she's a great writer, too. Just a great writer. Thank I, you. I enjoy that's your nice. stuff. I'm a fan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you.